teachers of Reddit. How are you feeling about doing in-person classes right now? I'm an elementary teacher and this feels like one of those situations where there's just not a great answer if we teach from home. I worry about how effective that teaching will be how parents will manage that arrangement alongside their jobs but if we do go back to school, all roads seem to lead to some form of madness. 1. What happens if I contract C? Do I need to have two weeks of lessons prepared for a substitute at all times? Can there possibly be enough substitute teaching candidates out there to fill all the gaps left by C diagnosis or suspected C diagnosis or contact with C? Substitutes already do not make a living wage for their work, or if they do, it's barely so. I can't imagine they are going to be more enthusiastic about going to schools under these circumstances. 2. What happens if my significant other, also a teacher, at a different school, comes into direct contact with a student at her school who has C? Do I have to quarantine because I've had direct contact with someone who has had direct contact with someone who has C? Question mark. 3. Point. Our state released standards that basically said that if a student or employee shows a sign of C, they've got to go until they can prove they're clear. Signs include coughing. We obviously wouldn't send someone home for a random throat clearing cough. But what about when other sicknesses start popping up as winterneers? Will colds be presumed C until proven otherwise? Question mark. 4. Point. Our state mentioned that teachers should socially distance from students. How do I effectively teach 5th graders from 6 feet away at all times? 5. I worry about my ability to communicate effectively for an entire day through a mask, considering the difficulties some of my students already had with listening. Add a socially distanced element that's likely going to have some of my students extended all the way to the back of the classroom, and I'm a bit concerned on that front. 6. Selfishly, I've wondered where my breaks and planning time would fit. There's been talks about eliminating specials, things like gym, art, library, etc. And keeping students in the same room all day, including lunch time and perhaps recess. How do I get away for my own lunch or off duty break slash plan time question mark. 7. Point. If we split schedules, some kids come on some days, some on others. How in the world will transportation work for those guys? A local district concluded that buses would have to make 8 runs to pick up kids in a socially distanced manner. 8. Bathroom breaks slash tissue slash drinks. Kids are kind of gross already. To maintain top flight cleanliness and social distancing, I feel an inordinate amount of class time will be devoted to routines. I envision super long bathroom breaks so everyone has a chance to have the bathroom to themselves. Time out of every hour to clean or wipe down laptops manipulatives, desks, etc. We already spend a lot of time on routines, pre-C, so doubling down makes me wonder exactly how much time will be left to actually try to teach. 9. What happens under a worst case scenario situation? Our student body has a lot of grandparents standing in as primary guardians. What happens if a student contracts C at school and takes it home to their advanced age primary caretaker? Is our small community prepared to take responsibility for the preventable death of a student's primary guardian? Question mark. 10. If we go hybrid, some home, some online. Who's in charge of managing each system? Curating online content was a job in and of itself. So how could a teacher be expected to go through full school days and then prepare online options for every subject? And how do we ensure those two components perfectly align? In the UK, English, secondary schools are, are due back in full in September with no expectations of social distancing and very little guidance for risk assessment. I work in the worst affected borough of London, where huge numbers of our kids have lost family members. Over 50% of kids live in poverty. We have the highest levels of gang crime, radicalization, s trafficking, child abuse, and neglect. And only around 5. 10% of kids in classes have had access to internet for remote learning since we went into lockdown in March. Many I haven't heard from at all. Social services and child protective services are already overwhelmed. I'm worried for myself and my colleagues as we enter precarious working conditions. 
but mostly I worry for the kids and their community. We cannot go back to normal and many will be deeply traumatized when I try to talk about how anxious I feel. Nobody in my family or friendship group understands. They just tell me to stop worrying and enjoy my summer break. Edit. Edited to clarify UK slash England. Situation is not the same in Scotland, Wales and Northern Ireland. Also, thanks for badges and gold guys. Didn't realize my ranting could garner such support. My wife is a principal and she's been at her school every day, including during the lockdown slash quarantines, trying to figure this out. I fear for her health and safety, especially her mental and emotional well-being. I see the enormous amounts of stress being put upon her, and it kills me that I can't help. There are some truly cruel parents slash people out there who feel they can treat my wife and her staff like trash because, well, I don't know why. I'd imagine most are just as frustrated as she is, and they are just taking it out on the school. But some are just self-centered, entitled assholes. Why make an already difficult situation harder? Despite what some might believe, teachers and staff haven't been lounging around at home, mailing it in and collecting pay, if anything. They're working harder and longer than ever, given almost no notice. Teachers and administrators had to completely redress in what school looks like almost overnight, and they succeeded. Kids were learning. Children were being fed. Needs were being met in the midst of a global crisis. No state agency did that. No so-called national experts on curriculum. The local educators fixed it in hours. Our government, with its infinite power, wealth, and resources, hasn't done anything but pretend the problem isn't there. In fact state and federal policies actually made things more difficult, but local schools figured out how to get around that. 2. No complaining. No protesting. Just solutions and amazingly clever plans. Remember that the next time someone tries to convince you that teachers don't deserve better pay and benefits. Remember that the next time someone tells you that teachers have it easy, or try to persuade you that educators are not among the smartest, most ingenious people in our society. College professor here. I really miss the wonderful classroom dynamics that in-person learning makes possible. Online learning makes discussions more strained and shallow. I also really love working with my students and discussing their projects one-on-one. -on -one. That is much harder to do remotely. However, I care about my students as people and the thought of making them and their families sick by returning to campus too soon makes me very worried. I want them to get a good education but not at the expense of their health and well-being. I would rather work twice as hard to make online learning successful than risk them getting sick or losing parents and grandparents to this illness. <laughs> I'm a speech pathologist. So while not a teacher, I do consider myself an educator. I provided services via telehealth from March through June and continue to do so for those students who require summer services. Two of my kids have highly intensive needs. So I see them at their home once a week now, which is terrifying. But it's what they need to make progress. The way I see it is, in March, I'm in New York. So I'm going on that timeline. We had to learn a completely different way of doing things. It was hard for the educators and the students, especially the students. So to me, going back to in-person learning is not the best choice as it will look very different from in-person learning in the past. It's a lot of change for anyone let alone young children. And if the numbers go up, we close all over again. I truly do not believe it is worth it. I understand the fact that many people rely on schools as child care, but I also think that it is up to the government to handle that. High hopes. I know. I have many ideas on this whole thing that I could go on and on about, but that's just my two cents. I'm terrified. I work at a high school in Texas. Last year my largest class had 36 students, between kids not having school supplies, passing in the hallways, gym, sports, discipline, and teenage hormones I know for a fact that social distancing and keeping things clean can't work. If full grown adults refuse to wear a mask then imagine one thousands of teenagers. Our school has a day or two, with babies. It's too risky and it's unfair to ask us to risk not only our lives but the lives of our students. This is not a hoax. There is no getting back to normal. We either have to accept it or risk certain death. 
I'm not exaggerating with any of this. The issue is that all these parents want us to go back to normal school, but fail to realize school will not be normal. No good morning hugs and high fives. No fun projects with partners. No team building activities like Marshmallow Tower or Saving Fred. No independent centers with shared materials. No shared technology permitted. No library books. No playground equipment. No classroom helper jobs. Paper passer. Librarian. Board eraser. ETC. No restorative circles with an actual talking piece. No special handshake to start class. No reading with a teddy bear or on a floor pillow. No switching seat privileges. No cafeteria antics. No visible smiling. Masks. No teacher's chair privileges. No kinda buddies. My class always helps in pre-k and kinda with a ton of stuff. No group counseling in the very small counselor's office. The list goes on. My year can't be done in person. Because what makes teaching in person so incredible? Won't be allowed or possible. I'm a K grade teacher in France, so sorry for my English. It's holidays now, but after the quarantine we had our students in class again. First with distanciation for a few weeks. Then without, distanciation rules were stopped for the youngest the last two weeks of school. It was not that difficult to teach them distanciations, because only a few of them came back to school. It was not mandatory. So the first week I had only 6 students, I usually have 29. Then I had more and more. They had no difficulties to adapt, and they had, were allowed to bring toys from home, to play on their own during recess. They were sad not to have their friends, and it was a bit difficult to teach them, because our our stuff in the class, pencils, book, games, work among. We didn't even have a table for each of them, I only had 4 round tables. I had to buy some stuff with my money, so they would have their own whites late for example. We had to make them wash their hand a lot. It took a lot of time, at their arrival, before entering the classroom, to sink for about 90 students. It'd take time. Then before and after recess. Before and after lunch, the cafeteria was closed, so they had a picnic in the class. Then before and after the afternoon recess. Then before leaving for home. And every time before, and after they had to use the bathroom. They sneeze or caw. And it was a bit difficult to make them keep the rule all day long. Every day for weeks, and at the same time, to see them eating lunch at each other's home. Having sleepover. Parents and kids being all in group, without distanciation, as soon as they lived the school area. A lot of works for not much. The only great things was having a small group of children. They made a great progress, because I had much more time for each of them. Also having a mask all day, while talking a lot in a hot day was difficult. I admire those who have it every day, no matter their work. It was also hard to hear some of them stories. One of my student had her parents divorced just before the pandem. The father didn't have time to live. They were having argument all day long, and he even jumped from the window in front of the child, from the first floor. He was okay, then being violent with the mother. And another one came back saying he was afraid his genitor could come back kidnapping him again. So sad. But I'm glad they told me now they are both safe. 